Hey guys, if you're new here, this is Ashley with Ashley's Reads on Twitter or a fiction and fantasy on Instagram. And today, in <laughs> the end of week one of May, I'm bringing you my 2020 stats video. <laughs> this is really on par for my channel if you're not new here. I finally finished all of my 2020 reads, I think in February. December was a very, very rough time for me and for my family, and I didn't do like any end of the year things, and I, I took like an entire month off of filming even like much less editing so i have a lot to catch up on and i'm trying very hard to stay on track and to stay disciplined with my filming schedule while i get caught up um and I'm so disciplined that i am filming this immediately upon returning from the dentist <laughs> so if i'm not enunciating as correctly as i usually would I am getting used to not having chipped teeth, so I'm <laughs> super hyped, but also just apologies if I am sound a little off. <laughs> Anyways, let's get into the stats. I did not bring notes because I was not prepared because I get anxious going to the dentist. So I did prepare a nice little Google Docs with all of this information. So today I'm not only bringing you my 2020 stats, um, which I'll explain once I get into it. Here's the document. <laughs> but I am also going to go over my favorite books that I read in 2020 and my favorite, no, my least favorite books that I read in 2020. And I know from watching a, um, some drama play out on book Twitter that that is kind of like <laughs> controversial. So I don't mean to offend any authors who wrote these books. Um, just like for me personally, one single individual reviewer, this is my thoughts. The book may be great to other people, but they these are going to be the ones that I enjoyed the least. I'm going to take an ibuprofen and go to sleep immediately after this video. <laughs> okay, so for stats, we'll do that first and get all of the numbers out of the way. I have four different kinds of stats to tell you guys. In total for 2020, I read 69 books and that is incredible considering my goal was 25. <laughs> this was the most books I think I've ever read in a year in my life besides maybe like I think maybe before Goodreads uh, when I was in high school and I could read like an entire Vampire Academy novel or like a Twilight book. God, I lived in Utah. I don't know. Um, I could read one of those in like three hours. I'm almost 26 now and I cannot do that anymore. So for my adult life post-college, this is um, the best year of my life for reading. <laughs> so and I'm, I'm doing really well in 2021 as well. So I'm hoping to beat that. But my goal for 2021 is only 50 books because I'm trying not to push myself too hard. And I don't know what the year will bring like moving and so on like that. But I bring with those 69 books stats that I will hopefully make into cute little pie charts or bar graphs or something like that up here because <laughs> I love charts. Okay, on to the genres. For genres, um, a lot of these are romance books, but I don't specifically have a romance genre. So if it's like a young adult fantasy romance, then it's just going under fantasy. Or um, if it's like a historical romance, then historical and so on. I read three historical books. Two, I thought it was manga, but I've been hearing a lot of people say manga, so I'm not sure. I've read two of them. <laughs> I read one children's book. I read four contemporary books. I read three graphic novels, most of which were Avatar The Last Airbender. I read seven classics, which is... <laughs> I don't remember reading seven classics, but I guess it's because I took a Greek mythology class last year and I read like three books for that class. And then at the beginning of 2020, I said that I would read like a bunch of classics. And <laughs> I guess I started that when I was, when you could go to the library and I really don't remember. I read 37 fantasies because that is my favorite genre. I read three mystery slash thrillers. I read six sci-fi slash dystopian novels, and I read four non-fiction books. So these are kind of miscellaneous. I had um, two memoirs, I think, um, uh, one self-help book and one like historical non-fiction. It was about Ireland. Yes. And then as far as the source, how I sourced my books, I got nine arcs. This was the first year that I had ever received any kind of advanced reader's copy and I think 
I can't remember what month it was, but my very first arc was The Honest Enneagram by Sarah Jean Case. And I am so grateful for being able to read that book and not only learn about the Enneagram, but get an actual Night Galley score to get books. So thank you. 45 library books. This did originally start purely just getting books from the library. And then it immediately switched to discovering Libby. Um, thanks to 2020. Two books were online. They were like novellas by the author, like a Marissa Meyer, like a novella for uh, the Lunar Chronicles. I borrowed two books from friends and 11 of them were books that I owned myself. That sounds really bad. It's like a sixth of my <laughs> TBR was on my, that only a sixth of my TBR was my own books. That does sound really bad, but for me that's pretty good. <laughs> And I don't actually own like an incredible amount of books because I'm definitely more of like a book reader than a book collector. So usually like after I read those books, they're probably already gone to like a friend or family member or a thrift shop or something. And then the next up is how I read the books or like what format. So I read 27 physical books and that's pretty much all I had ever read before last year. I read 23 ebooks thanks to Libby and 2020. And I listened to 19 audiobooks. Um, I think this, I listened to this Summer I Turn Pretty series on, I don't know if audiobook is the right, like back when you went to the library and you had to like borrow the little mp3 play. That's probably a very terrible description. I can't really remember, but that's like the audiobooks, I, the only audiobooks I'd listened to before last year. So that was really wild. I loved audiobooks. Uh, normally, I'm always multitasking in everything, no matter what, throughout the day. And so I found that like I can do anything and listen to an audiobook and I can pay attention. And that's wild because my attention is very easily drifted. <laughs> and information on series. So 20 of these books were standalone books. 14 books were books that were continuing a series I had started. 30 books were series that I started last year. <laughs> Oh, and 22 of those 30 are series that I will continue. So either I didn't like it or I already finished it last year or this next book isn't out yet for me to continue this year. And I finished two series. <laughs> I need help. And I reread three books. So it was, I just, I think it was just the Agatar series. So um, definitely drop my phone. <laughs> Definitely for 2021, my goal after reading those stats is to read more of my own books and to read, uh, like to branch out more genre wise. I've already been doing great. I think with that this year, I've read like some a uh, horror and a couple thrillers. So that's good. A couple mysteries, some more contemporaries, but I want to read more books in series that I have already started. And more of my own books. Those are my goals for 2021. <laughs> so hopefully when we check in, in my next like check-in, I'm working on the first three months of 2021 for after this video so that we can have like a wrap-up in stats for that. So just know that, that <laughs> my goals that I'm establishing today on May 7th of 2021 probably will not be reflected in that stats video. <laughs> but hopefully in the springtime wrap-up. <laughs> But that is all of the stats that I have for you. <sighs> My teeth are killing me. Okay, on to the best and the worst. <laughs> We're gonna do the worst first. <laughs> I'm very small and delicate. Please understand this is my personal opinion. You can give these books five stars and I won't hate you. Okay, let's go on. <laughs> the first one, I didn't write the authors down so let's hope I remember these people. <laughs> the first one is, is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon question mark? I did not write the author down, and frankly, I don't remember, nor do I care. It is a manga slash manga. I will look up how to pronounce that afterwards, unless you guys would like to correct me in the comments. This book, I guess I should have prepared synopses. This book is about like a 12 year old boy. I think he's 12, he's either 12 or 14, and he is like a monster slayer. It's kind of like, like you go into this underground dungeon and there's different levels and you can go to different, like once you're more powerful, you can go to lower levels and fight more powerful monsters and bring back more rewards for your guild. It's kind of like D&D, &D, but like 
if it were played by what's like a polite way to say this L mm, horny 12 year old boys am i allowed to say that i hope anyways um that's basically the entire book i think his goddess was hestia and she's like madly in love with him and he has a boss and she's madly in love with him and he meets some random woman um, at the bar and she's madly in love with him and so they're all just like trying not to fight one another over this 12 year old weakling and like every woman in the manga slash manga has like huge breasts and they like comment on them and like call them like things that only a 12 year old boy could think to call, describe a woman's body. We'll just we'll just say that. It was terrible. These aren't in particular order either. I just like picked the lowest ones off of my book, uh, off of my Goodreads list. The next one is Notorious by, I wanna say Minerva Spencer. This was an arc that I received and I was so excited because it is a like royalty historical romance that was heavily marketed as enemies to lovers. I read the excerpt and gave it five stars. The dialogue was amazing. And it starts out where there's like, he was some kind of like minor royal and he is in like a marriage season where like all the nobles and such meet one another. And his sister's best friend, I love that, like, that dynamic, um, is his enemy. And she thinks that he's just this total playboy and she's way too good for him and they're just verbally sparring the entire event well there's other women there trying to get his attention and he's way too busy just like verbally sparring with his enemy and it was so good but then when i actually received the book as an arc it was not like that at all um she was madly in love with him and hiding it that's not really a spoiler because you find out like immediately like upon starting the book that she's pretending that she hates him so she doesn't have to have feelings for him and it's an arranged marriage trope there was the main thing that i had an issue with was the fact that like i believe this was written by a white author and what was his name his name was Gabriel or Gideon, but she actually messed his, I think it was Gabriel, and she actually messed his name up in the arc <laughs> and called him Gideon. I think, I think that was something I brought up. I cannot remember if the country that he said that he came from was a fictional country or if it was a real country, but they did say that he was Muslim and she calls him out, the main female character calls him out because he's drinking like champagne or something and she's like well you're a muslim you're supposed to be following your beliefs aren't you and he was like well you know christians who don't follow their beliefs you know this is i just don't follow this one specific rule and i was like that's fair but then um she like continued to like feed him like pork and ham and that like <laughs> Like the author just forgot. I felt to me like the representation was horrid and it felt as though they just wanted to make him like a Middle Eastern man so that she could go on about how he has like bronze skin and he's exotic and he's an alpha male and it was... It was not good. <laughs> It made my skin crawl. Like the what I loved in the excerpt was how the main female character was like she has runs like a feminist organization about women's rights and she's very independent and she's very strong headed and as soon as they got married she was like submissive and uh, it was not good. It was not good at all. That's all I have to say. <laughs> and then I read um Dear Diary. And the author in my head is M.B. Feeney. Uh, this book was an ebook that I received in an Amazon giveaway, and it is about a girl in high school. She's like 16. She comes from, I think, London to be an exchange student in the US, and she lives with two boys who are brothers, and one is like a nice musician, and the other is like a bad boy and she falls in love with both of them that's it that's the story there's a series but we won't be continuing it but guess what is teen pregnancy if star cross is the book that i'm thinking of i want to say it was by josephine angelini this was recommended to me by my best friend jamie jamie is my best friend in the entire world and she was my maid of honor and my college roommate and basically every great moment in my life includes jamie and I still to this day remember 
when we were sitting in a tattoo parlor for hours because there was we were waiting for our friend not even one of us to get a seven dollar tattoo for friday the 13th and i'm pretty sure it was crooked while we were waiting for hours in this completely impulse event that i was unprepared for and I had not read a book through most of university, she introduced me to A Court of Thorns and Roses and then Throne of Glass. And that completely like healed me of my years long university reading slump and got me back into reading again. And she also even inspired me to be a content creator for Bookstagram and then eventually Booktube in the first place. But she also recommended Starcross by Josephine Angelini to me and Jamie, I don't know if I can forgive you for this. This book involves Greek mythology and I do did really like Percy Jackson um, when I was a kid. And so I thought I would love this. It's basically like about descendants more than demigods. And I think they're like descendants of Apollo and Zeus and maybe Aphrodite. It's like these characters who are basically forced to be enemies because they're chosen by the gods to kill one another, but they have to work together to save the world. Is that the plot? I don't even remember. It was something. It was very dramatic. They're like trying to kill each other and I'm like, are they going to kill or make out? Like, are we going to kiss or kill here? And that's a trope that I usually like, but this one, it was not well done. There was a normal mortal boy that she could have been with who was so much better for her. And also we had to pull the whole like Cassandra Clare thing, which this book may have come out before Cassandra Clare's books, but we had to pull the whole like, oh my God, are we related? We can't be together because we're family. No, no. No, I don't want to continue the series, but I do have a terrible problem with completionism and it was recommended to me by Jamie, my platonic soulmate. So I may read book two, but I'm not going to enjoy any minute of it. But I'm going to try for you if you're watching, Jamie. Finally, <laughs> we're going to talk about the book that we've talked about for all of 2020, <laughs> Dragonfly and Amber by Diana Gabaldon. This is the second book in the Outlander series and it took me from what like November to February to do this. Like this book I had to check out as an ebook, as an audiobook, as a physical book while I was moving home for Christmas. I was in Ohio for a month and so I had to bring this book back to a library, check it out at a diff It was so slow. It was so slow. It's really just like uh, flashbacks to the past where it's like Claire being pregnant and Jamie being a protective possessive alpha male and trying to fight other people or Claire getting into trouble and Jamie saving Claire and I remember thinking that the present time was so boring that I hoped we'd go back to the past but by the time we got back to the past and this drama had happened there's like magic that's just convenient now there's magic in this universe I was like, please God, bring us back to the present. I'll take the boring character. Whoever the man was, the historian who was helping them, who was so clearly related to them all. And that's another like, are these, is this romance distant cousins? Are they distant enough for it to be acceptable? Do I even care about any of these characters? No. But will I read book three? Yeah. Will I hate it? Yeah. So that's where we're at. <laughs> Those are my five worst books. If you read these books and love them or you wrote these books, then um, I'm sorry. Um, this is my opinion. <laughs> I, I hope other people like them. <laughs> Uh, yes, on to the best five. One of the top five books that I had is Surrender by Mary Lee McDonald. Uh, this was one of the first physical arts that I had received. And this is a memoir. When her birth parents were around 16, her biological mother got pregnant and 
gave her up for adoption and she then grew up with adoptive parents and when she was 16 she found herself in similar circumstances where she was pregnant and had to give her child up for adoption. So this tells the story of her growing up and having to give her son away as well as reuniting with that son decades later after his birth father had passed. It was so emotional and it was heartbreaking but there was hope in it too and as someone who comes from a broken family I found that very very inspiring and I loved reading it and it's now with my aunt to read it. The next book was How to Catch a Queen by Alyssa Cole. This is my first book by Alyssa Cole and I will definitely be reading more of hers. Um, this one is a contemporary um, arranged marriage trope. Shanti, I can't, Sanyu, Shanti and Sanyu. Um, so Shanti is one of the most ambitious characters that I have had, I have read about in literature and I loved her. There were so many good quotes in here of like motivation. Uh, she decided when she was a little girl that she was going to be, a, uh, that she was going to be a queen. As she didn't want to be a princess, she wanted to be a queen. And unlike other little girls, she worked her entire life towards being a queen. And so she meets his, like, media team, I don't know, whatever, his council on a royal dating website and they get an arranged marriage but this is in the kingdom of i'm probably pronouncing this wrong najaza and they don't treat their queens like queens there really they're more just for appearance to have an heir you can leave them basically at any time and just get a new queen when it's convenient for you and that's not the queendom that she signed up for so it's very like Will he just get rid of her when he meets her and he doesn't want to have any feelings for her? And she's determined to make change in this kingdom because she sees the kingdom for what it can be instead of what it is, like he sees it. And it was so good. <laughs> I cannot wait to read more. Um, I can't remember, she had like a thriller called like When No One Is Watching. I'm very excited to read that next. Hopefully I can get my hands on it soon. Um, yeah, and I'll probably be doing a giveaway for that book because I think I gave it 4.5 or 5 stars, but I don't usually reread books. And this was a little bit of a mystery, so I definitely probably won't reread it, but it was great, so I'd love to give it to someone else. Next up, Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom by Leigh Bardugo. I haven't cried a lot um, reading books as much as I used to growing up. I sobbed reading these books. Um, it is essentially a found family trope. It's kind of like Ocean's Eleven, Ocean's Twelve. It's like um, where you have like a squad and you're all under contract to do a mission and everyone has like a unique skill that they bring to the group. But at the same time, most of the members of this group have been together for a very long time and you can tell that they love one another even though they would never admit it. There's like three different ships here and I, they're all kind of enemies to lovers in like a weird way, but they were all great in their own ways. And <laughs> normally there's characters like in these group found family tropes, there's always like a character or two where I'm like, I don't care about you, get back to the other characters. But with this one, I loved every character. <laughs> like even the really minor ones that were barely in the book, everyone was just so well written and Lee Bardugo is definitely making it up to one of my favorite authors. I am hoping to start Shadow and Bone soon so that I can watch the show Shadow and Bone. I did read like the first few chapters. The next one is Cinder by Marissa Meyer. This one is like a steampunk Cinderella retelling. I don't recall seeing a lot of Cinderella retellings. I feel like recently it's been all Beauty and the Beast retellings, like so many. I even have some arcs that I need to get to that are Beauty and the Beast retellings, like multiple ones. So a Cinderella one was really exciting because I feel like, I don't know, we just, I haven't seen one like that in a while and I've never really read anything steampunk, if that's the right term, but like it was more like robots, droids, and then there's aliens and it's very interesting. Cinder lives with her stepmother and one stepsister and she basically is a mechanic she makes some money for them and i think she gets hired to work on the prince's droid bot it's been a minute 
it was an audiobook. I don't retain memory from audiobooks well. But she's hired to work on his robotic person um, and she stumbles across some information. It was interesting. Um, it was a good romance. I like that romance better than the second romance, I think, in the second book. And I don't think I've read the third book yet. But yeah, I, I liked it. I'd recommend it. And finally, for favorites, I read this one the last week of 2019, but I'm counting it because I have to. <laughs> I think you guys know I'm an Erin A. Craig stan account. Like, <laughs> Anyways, Erin um, A. Craig's debut novel is called A House of Salt and Sorrows. And this book follows, I believe, Annalie. And she, this is a 12 dancing princesses retelling. I'm not very familiar with that at all. And I didn't even know it was a retelling because I don't think I've read that story. And it is a very like atmospheric, like oceanside lighthouse village. They live in like this old, like decrepit kind of mansion. And there's all these sisters, but they seem to be cursed because they keep dying. And um, they just want to go and get married and I think people are like worried like that if they marry into their family that the that they'll be cursed too or something like that and it's very interesting. I don't know why I can't remember the series because this was like my favorite book. <laughs> um, it's, it's a standalone book. It's very dark. Um, there are a lot of plot twists in it. And I was in a reading slump at the end of 2019 and I read this entire book in like less than 48 hours just sitting on the couch at my parents' house. And I can't do that anymore usually. So that says so much about a book. But I loved it so much that now I can't wait to read Small Favors. And I hope that the, that one is just as good. Um, her next standalone, I think. And hopefully that makes it to my top of 2021 books. Um, yeah, I... If you guys stayed through this to hear my like 10 synopses, when y'all know I can't do synopses, <laughs> that means so much. <laughs> um, that's pretty much it for my 2020 stats. I really just wanted to get this out because I know that I'm going to quickly lose this document and I won't remember like the genres and things like that that I read. So I want to be able to come back and compare this. We're going to do like a stats video with January, February, and March coming up and then we're going to be pretty much caught up guys. This is incredible <laughs> unbelievable i'm just waiting for like something to happen where i can't film for a month so hopefully that doesn't happen but um thank you so much for watching and if you um have thoughts about any of the 10 books that i brought up i would love to hear about them i'm very curious like about the books that i hated did other people love them were they great reads to other people like is it me subjectively <laughs> am i just being too harsh <laughs> Um, yeah, thank you guys so much. Give me your thoughts down below. Have a great weekend.